Hello, I'm Heather Walker. I'm the Child Welfare Director in Weld County. Hello, I'm Ruby Richards, the Deputy Director of Douglas County Human Services, and we were the first two counties to implement the independent assessment process. So as Douglas County was ramping up to roll out the independent assessment process, we really provided as much information to our staff internally as we could. So we first started just talking about it as a management team. We then had the managers go back to their supervisors and talk about it just with their supervisors, really sort of laying the foundation of first having a good understanding of what Family First was, all of it. And then presenting at team meetings, having large division meetings, making sure that we presented this information at our best practice court, which included some providers, GALs, respondent attorneys, the magistrate, and really started with just as much information as we could share as possible. So in Weld County, uh, we began with lots of conversations. What is it that's really going to make a change in implementing Family First in general? Through those conversations with managers, rolling out different things to staff, really having more in-depth conversations around what does the uh, implementation of placing a youth or a child in a QRTP look like? So at all levels, having conversations around that, more so at the management level though. Then really at best practices court with um, our attorneys, uh, judges, magistrates, uh, GALs, and all other, there's a, several other stakeholders that attend those meetings, beginning to talk about family first in general and specifically around the differences of what a QRTP would actually offer a youth or a child. Then when we were identified as uh, a county that would be a uh, perspective in adopting early and beginning to move this forward, um, it really became more of a conversation at our best practices court, uh, ensuring that uh, the judges and magistrate had the bench card training. I really pushed for them to attend that so that they had a full idea of what their role was in that and that um, I knew eventually when, when I would do the training with them that it would complement exactly what we were uh, beginning to discuss and roll out. So at that point, having a, a, larger, a larger meeting of um, everyone involved. Our ASO is Beacon and then the judges, magistrate. North Range is our independent assessor and then our, our attorneys, GALs, representation of everyone. So pulling all of those together as kind of a kickoff event and uh, having that full conversation, doing a little, a little snippet of a training of sorts about what this process looks like, how quick of a process it is. We didn't train all of our staff right at, up front because uh, caseworkers, as you know, turn over and different things happen with staff. So really having the management have the bulk of the knowledge and information as caseworkers come to them with their supervisor asking, what do you think is my next step? At least they understand that process and then really having a core team that fully understands every little, everything. So one thing that we did learn from that first experience though, was to do some pre-planning before you actually submit the referral. So making sure that the family is aware that your intent is to um, put the referral in. Making sure that you've gathered whatever other uh, assessments or evaluations this child or youth has had in the past, an IEP or a, a different mental health assessment that had been done in the past. Making sure that you prep the GAL, that the independent assessor will be contacting them. So we learned that if you prep all of those things ahead of time and then submit your referral referral, you're not running so frantic with that short window of time for that assessment to be completed. So that was probably our biggest learning lesson from the first one, but I think folks felt prepared and ready and literally just needed to jump in the pool. Encourage your staff to be prepared as much as they can with all of the information needed, all the collateral information, any type of evaluation that they've had previous, previously, an IEP, whatever it takes for them to fill out that form. Because it is definitely a lengthy form, but it is very vital to the process because the independent assessor is really picking up a, a file that they have never seen before. So it's really important for them to have that. Uh, I think those were the big things of lessons learned initially. I would want my colleagues to know that the collaboration that most of them already have and are working on are really your foundation for this whole process to work. Not just the independent assessor process, but for family first. It is 
your cornerstone of ensuring that the communication is effective, that your partnerships are intact, and that as we begin to move forward, it will and it has become harder in describing and going through this process with my partnerships and my community. We've had a couple hiccups, even just with the first two. Being able to say, hang on a minute, I'll get back to you, I'll find the answer out, and be able to have that conversation with them, for them to be able to trust me and trust my staff that we're gonna get back to them right away and be able to have answers. Find out who your ASO is if you don't already know and reach out to them. Just introduce yourself, ask to meet for coffee or lunch if you're comfortable with that, and begin having the conversations about what this relationship is going to look like. Ask if they can bring with them um, who they've contracted to do the independent assessment so you can meet them, so you can talk about how they want to receive that referral information, but really just reach out to those folks that you don't know, don't feel like you know very well and just have a conversation. Ask them what they know about this process. Where do they feel like they haven't gotten good answers or don't have good information? And start having an exchange of information because we really are learning from each other. And the other thing I would suggest is any of the toolkits and information that you've received with the state, start sharing that. Start sending it to them. Start encouraging them to read it. So much of the process is just taking your own time to self-learn. I would agree with that and also say level setting the information that you already have around what a QRTP is or what the process is and, and asking your partners what is your understanding of this process. I felt initially that I didn't know enough <laughs> and so had reached out to my state partners and said would you just attend my next best, best court practices meeting and I'm going to do a training and would you just be there to support and encourage and make sure I'm answering all their questions. Am I, am I doing this right? So I did that and essentially, yes, I knew more than probably what I thought I knew. And it was, it was helpful to at least have the state there to help answer or support and give guidance or direction to some of the questions that maybe I couldn't answer. For me, that was a first step in feeling like I was able to be more of an expert at the work that's already being done. I totally agree with Ruby. It is not any different than the casework practice that we do every single day in making decisions, in um, working with families, engaging them, bringing the youth to the table, whatever it takes to uh, get a decision made.